Hi, my name is Chris Nadeo, and I'm a technical marketing engineer with Cisco's Server Access and Virtualization Group. This video is part of a continuing series that's intended to show some of the unique value prop and advantages that UCS brings to the market uh, via our unified computing system, aka UCS. So this video we're going to talk about um, UCS fiber channel different modes of operation, both NPV and fiber channel switch mode and how those are kind of unique in the industry in terms of what we can do with those. A couple of slides here for background and then we'll take a look at UCS Manager. Um, this is the end host mode or NPV mode of connectivity for UCS. What you see at the bottom of this diagram is a series of UCS chassis all linked up via FCOE to our fabric interconnects the 6120-6140 models, um, all the FCOE magic happens behind those and then when we leave those fabric interconnects and go northbound, as you see in the yellow box designated fiber channel traffic, we are operating an NPV mode of operation. So what this means is we drop seamlessly into your existing SAN infrastructure. No changes required. Doesn't have to be Cisco technology, although we'll get into some of the benefits that if you do have Cisco technology, in uh, this presentation as well as uh, a later video series. Uh, the upstream SAN switch needs to be operating in NPIV mode of operation and then you're connected into your storage like you normally would be. And then on the Ethernet side you see there uh, a LAN switch and then connection into your NAS storage. So in this sense UCS is representing itself as a whole bunch of initiators. No changes necessary whatsoever to your current LAN and SAN infrastructure. You seamlessly plug in UCS and use it and the FCOE technology happens behind or south of those fabric interconnects as opposed to anything you need to uh, uh, change or deploy northbound of those. So this is a classic mode of operation that's been in existence for uh, since UCS inception. Now if we take a look at this slide recently introduced with the UCS 1.4 software, uh, this is a direct storage topology. So what we're doing here is we're coming right out of those fabric interconnects and we're plugging into your FC or FCOE storage. Um, I'm, I'm specifically talking about block storage here in this diagram. You could also directly connect into a NAS device, iSCSI SIPS NFS. Um, we'll talk about that in a later video series. But if you notice the yellow box there, one of the differences is that we're now operating these fabric interconnects in fiber channel switching mode. So we've changed the default mode of operation here from NPV to fiber channel switching mode, and that allows the fiber channel switching functionality to occur on these fabric interconnects such that we can directly connect them into an FC storage target or an FCOE storage target. Um, that, uh, that you may choose to deploy from either EMC or NetApp initially and then we'll be adding other vendors as a function of time as we uh, productize this further. So th this is really nice for pod-like deployments in the sense that you don't have to have a SAN infrastructure in place, you don't need fiber channel access switches, gives you a lot of flexibility here in terms of maybe remote office deployments or small pod-like deployments where you need to quickly stand up a, a cloud, a private cloud type of a service go ahead and do that with a much lower cost point but get all the benefits you normally get because those 6100s are acting as a, a fiber channel switching devices. Now the LUN mapping for security bullet there you see on the left what that means is at this point in time in the 1.4 release we don't expose the ability to manage fiber channel zones or create zones. Well, that is coming in a roadmap or, uh, release but in the interim you can use uh, fiber channel uh, LUN mapping on the array controller itself for FC, FC, uh, and FCOE. So taking this one step further, we've kind of combined the previous two slides into what I'm showing here is a hybrid topology with direct attach on the left and a SAN attach or classic attach on the right side, in the upper right. And the advantage of doing this is really the following. Um, I get kind of the benefits of direct attach from an I.O. perspective but I maintain my, my zoning, my security, my, um, my operational practices around that with in-band fiber channel connections up into my sand fabric. You can see there in the green my fiber channel connections and the, the blue lines are showing FCOE connections. But by having both connected to my fabric interconnects, I'm, a lot, I'm able to create zone sets up on my MDS or Nexus 5000. This must be Cisco technology here up in the sand fabric create zone sets and have those merge down into the 6100. So 
maintain all my operational premises and practices, but still get some direct connect storage for uh, different use cases. One of the use cases we're seeing out of this is a migration into FCOE, so it's kind of a unique offering in that we can really provide a, a nice mechanism for you to go from your SAN infrastructure, how am I going to get to an FCOE infrastructure, what is that going to look like, how disruptive. Well, this gives you kind of a painless way to do that because you can slowly grow out the, on the upper left side, the FCOE storage is a function of time, get direct connection to that, and then <coughs> slowly potentially decommission elements of the, of the legacy SAN architecture if you so choose to do that, and all the while maintaining kind of your operational practices. So um, it's kind of a nice story there for migrations and for those customers that want to maintain that zone of practice. So that is also going to be a supportive topology. All right, so let's take a look at you know what that looks like from a UCS manager perspective. Hopefully by now you've seen a couple of these videos, if not all of them, and you, you've seen the UCS manager software uh, more than once come into play. Uh, what this is is our single point of administration for everything in UCS. Uh, very powerful management construct here, as you've seen and heard hopefully. But that also includes all of these new storage topologies instead of having different management planes or different management interfaces to kind of set all this up again all done through UCS manager so what you see here is if you look at the equipment pane is where we really kind of decide what roles our ports are going to have you see some new port types new port names here introduced um, if you're already familiar with UCS we've got appliance ports that I'm showing a mouse over here those are ports dedicated to direct connect NAS while maintaining any host mode of operation on the Ethernet side of the house. We've got FCOE storage ports for directly connecting to an FCOE target. And I clicked on one of those here and you can see some of the attributes on the right hand side. The port itself designated and then the different vSAN it's assigned to, the MAC address, etc. So you can see some of those. Um, your typical server and uplink ports are still there and then if we go into the expansion module itself um, and we kind of clicked on the expansion module so you can see that pop up here's our fiber channel expansion module I've got different port types associated with that I've got a storage FC port and what that is that's my direct connect fiber channel storage port so that's how I directly connect to my NetApp EMC fiber channel target off of that port so I've enabled this specific port to have this specific functional role in UCS. Again, very unique concept here with UCS and its object management hierarchy in the sense that you define a functional role to the pieces of hardware and that's all managed from one location from UCS and its object engine that we've got. So a very unique offering. And then in addition, I've got my FC uplink ports. This would be into my traditional MDS or M5K attach in this hybrid type architecture. So a lot of different port types here. Um, that we've exposed now to, for again, for these different roles. The reason we've named them such as we have is so it's a clear understanding of what the role is of that actual port. If I go back and click on the Fabric Interconnect one more time just to show you, um, if I mouse over here, the status, you see the overall status, the Ethernet mode is end host, and the FC mode is switch. So I can mix and match Ethernet modes and FC modes. I don't have to go all in here in terms of everything is switching mode or everything is a is an end host mode of operation. They are mutually exclusive, if you will, in terms of how you want to set that up. So a lot of different port types there um, to, 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 be, uh, to be used. Very trivial to set these up. Again, if I want to change the mode of operation of this Fabric Interconnect itself, I would just come down and click this button that says set FC end host mode or set switching mode, and everything else happens for you automatically. Again, no manual configuration where you have to go and change things or upgrade firmware. It's all done for you automatically um, through the UCS manager on both sets of fabric interconnects. So it's an automated type of a workflow um, that we've got, which again, you know, very, very unique in the industry, this powerful centralized management approach. And then one more thing I wanted to show you from a, uh, what this, you know, concept is. If you look at our SAN tab, and by now hopefully you're somewhat familiar with the different operational roles across these tabs, whether it be equipment, service profiles, the network LAN administration, in this case the SAN administration, what I'm showing you here is two scopes of storage. I've got my direct attached storage which I'll look under as a storage cloud and then I've got my traditional SAN cloud for my upstream connections into my SAN fabric and the scope of each is different. If you look they both show fabric interconnects designated here but what we do is when we expand these 
the fabric interconnects will show different scopes for the different types of storage interfaces, right? So in this case, I've got storage FC interfaces. This is direct connect under my storage cloud. And in the same cloud case, I've got FC port channels because that's a global type setting and my uplink FC interfaces. So again, the concept here is eat the sand cloud versus the storage cloud, giving you different scopes of management, that which is contained in your direct connect topologies, and then that which is going northbound out into your sand fabric. And it helps you kind of keep clear in your mind what vSAN or what uplink or what object I'm talking about is related to what scope all under the sand tab. And it allows the sand administrator then to set up specific attributes, objects here, vSANs, etc., specific to a role in either the, the local or the extended use case. So it's kind of a, a nice uh, scope there of management. All right, so if we wrap this up, hopefully you're, you're, you've gotten some, some ideas out of this. If I, could, if I could summarize kind of the advantages of the storage topologies here, we're really offering maximum flexibility. Different deployment options, what is the use case, what is the application, what's the environmentals look like, what makes the most sense for you to deploy, direct connect, hybrid, or just a classic NPV mode of operation. Very flexible there. Seamless integration in your existing environment. Now, our competitors will like to say, you know, to attach UCS in your environment, you make all these changes. That's not the case. Drop right into your existing FC SAN as well as your Ethernet. We can provide a pod-like deployment where every fun all the functionality is all in one. Um, as I mentioned before, with this direct connect model, if I want to do FCOE with my servers and, and my favorite storage vendor there, I can do that without any intervening devices coming right off the 6100. Um, by putting those into fiber channel switching mode of operation. And finally, we're really leveraging FCOE internally, as I mentioned in the in, uh, earlier slide, but also externally now because we're getting FCOE storage targets direct connect. So all those benefits of FCOE around consolidation, unified fabric, etc., are really coming to fruition here with this direct connect topology. So hopefully you've enjoyed this video and, and you've learned a little bit about the different options here with MPV mode and switching mode of operations. Um, please take a look at cisco.com slash go slash UCS where there's much more printed collateral for you. You can download some white papers, we have configuration guides, all that sort of information we can follow up. Thanks for your time, have a great day.